All right, I'll get started. So hello and welcome to another episode of Face the Trader. Today we have Partha Banerjee joining us all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Partha is the co-founder of NP Financials and a professional trader and mentor with over 17 years of experience. He has mentored over 30,000 traders. As a certified financial technician, Partha dedicates his time to an analyzing the markets with a mix of both fundamental and technical analysis. We are thrilled to have him with us today to share his journey, insights, and ex expertise. So, Parta, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us on this episode for Face the Trader. Uh, a couple of... Thank you very much. It's, it's great to have you. Um, just a reminder, reminder for everyone that's watching, nothing that you hear in this podcast is trading advice. Don't consider it as such. Make sure to seek out trading education and read more trading materials to learn if trading is the right path for you. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, Patrick Powers, uh, our Scandinavian Capital Markets Risk and Operations Manager. Uh, so Patrick will help us uh, in this podcast by speaking a little bit more about the technical side of trading with Parta, asking a few more in-depth questions. And Parta, you're welcome also to ask any questions for Patrick that you wish. Um, so, Parta, you start out with a bachelor in production engineer engineering here, uh, which is quite odd considering that now you are on the financial markets. Could you share with us why did you do production engineer and why do you end up changing to the financial markets? Yeah, that's a good question to start with. I thank you uh, for that question. Uh, production engineering was a was was a choice uh, because. Uh, Back in India, generally speaking, uh, males prefer engineering and females prefer doctor medicine practice. So by that standard, I, be, I, I become an engineer. I was trained in engineering. Now I must say that I've forgotten everything about engineering. Because the two things which I have never forgot or will not forget is discipline and control. So in four years in engineering, what engineering taught me is to be a disciplined person and to be a control person which I believe it was very helpful to start with in trading. It was a long story. When I joined the number one company in Tata Steel in India, which is Tata Steel, they're the biggest manufacturing of steel in India. And at the age of 22, uh, after engineering, I got 700 preferential shares from Tata Steel at the, at the value and then um, 45 rupees. In India, it is rupees as in Australia, this dollar. So 45 rupees for 700 preferential shares. And I, when I left uh, Tata Steel uh, after three years and joined Siemens in Calcutta, in India, uh, in the first year in Siemens also, I, I was lucky to get a preferential shares, 550 of them at a price of 52 rupees. And after three years, Tata Steel went up in a bull market from 55 rupees to 700 rupees and Siemens from 52 to 550. I was not understanding what is happening. So I, I, at, that, at, the, at that age, just after engineering, it was only a paper to me. I was holding the paper shares and they are going up. Tata Steel, as I said, went up to 700 and Siemens went up to 550. So that's a 10 times, 15 times jump from the initial investment at the young age. So that actually, intricates me to understand a little bit about share market. What is it? What is share market? Then I started reading the newspapers. And then uh, I came to Australia. When I came to Australia, um, I, I was caught in a, a thing called, Aust I would not probably name, name them. So they, <laughs> I got a service and they used to tell, tell us what to buy, what not to buy and all those things. And uh, more, more often than not, what was happening, what I was listening to them when I was buying and that was going down and, they, and then when selling, it was going up. So that it stopped me from doing that and start my own understanding of the market. Uh, I was doing seven to five job, uh, sorry, nine to five job and then coming back from a uh, job um, and then starting my study at Russell 2000. Uh, that's a stock, uh, small stock, small market capitalization in the United States. So whatever I learned from that Russell and S&P 500, 
uh, to lead me to uh, to leave the corporate job in 2010 and start uh, our own uh, we started as a home business in 2013 it's a it's a private business as np financial so we started at 2013 and we got our australian financial services license in 2016 so that was the long story cut short wow it's a very interesting story it's it's not exactly what happened to me but i can relate to a lot of what you said because I don't come from this financial industry as well. It's not my background. Uh, I worked in digital marketing for many years. Uh, I was born in Brazil. I worked my entire adult life in Brazil, uh, at least the time that I was there as an adult, adult uh, in digital marketing. And, you know, one thing led to another, and I ended up falling into this uh, financial market space. And I can see a little bit in your eyes when you talk about it that, it sparks a little, like your eyes shine a little bit about it. I, I, I can see that you kind of maybe fell in love a little bit with it because that's my case where, you know, it's a it, it's something that I never expected that I would like or be interested in at all. And now it's something that I leave and breathe every day. Absolutely true. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm in love and passionate about trading for the last 15 years. Yeah. From 2010. That's great to hear. And so... Talk to me about a little bit about your trading style, your trading strategy. What, how do you, I mean, I, I can see here uh, from what Daniela gave me that you emphasize on a blend of fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, how do you balance the two out of those, uh, especially doing, let's say, market conditions like we have right now, which are quite volatile, where we have interest rates, cu cutting interest rates and all that. So yeah, that was a fantastic question. Uh, fundamental and technical both plays a 50-50 role. But uh, just to start the discussion is, uh, before asking a question, uh, I would say there is no right or wrong answer in trading. The only right answer in trading is that what is making money. So that is the only right answer. So if yeah. I have to start with the question to you before answering your question, what is price? So what would be your uh, one line or two line on what is price? Patrick, I think you are the you are the man to, to respond to that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe at the most fundamental level, it's, you know, the price where buyers and sellers meet, you know, that market clearing price. Um, you know, uh, that's I'd say as basic as I could get on it. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Very good answer. And if you ask anyone at NP Financials what is price, probably we will see, we will say that price is a plot of human emotions of greed and fear. So price, we consider price as a plot of human emotions of greed and fear. And when we are fearful, we tend to sell in panic. And when we are greedy, we tend to buy on hope. And this element of greed and fear which is in our limbic brain, has not changed much in last 20,000 years. I repeat, it has not changed much in last 20,000 years because initially we were fearful of lion, tiger, snake. Now we are fearful of losing a draw, job, not, not being in office at the right time. So the fear element is constant. So if I say that price is a plot of human emotions of greed and fear, then I can actually identify the pattern because that is a reflection of human behavior and that reflection of human behavior is consistent and we can take advantage of that reflection of consistent price pattern, whether, whether it is in top or at bottom or whether it is trending or not trending or whether the market is in a side or sideways or range market. So I always have seen that fundamental, actually, there is a tremendous relationship between the fundamental and technical. And we all believe that fundamental drives the market. But what the problem with fundamental is, it, died, it, it, it will not tell us when to buy or when to sell or when to take profit, where to put the stop loss. So that for that, if we consider fundamental as the driving element, and then technical as the entry element, I think we can mix and match fundamental and technical in a very good way. But And from my experience in last 15 years, what we have seen, whatever fundamental news comes, it actually comes in the direction of the technical more often than not, almost very high percentage of the time. I actually have a one question there. So what do you what do you do when the, the fundamental narrative and the technical, um, you know, I don't know 
how you'd say it, but entry points conflict. You know, they might be saying buy on the fundamental side of it, but your technical signals are saying maybe it's a hold or a sell. How, how do you handle that situation? Uh, we uh, Good question. We do not buy and sell on fundamentals. We buy and sell on technicals. So purely on technicals, we buy and sell. And given this situation, nowadays retailers are coming more and more. So we have identified only two or three fundamental aspects of trading. The number one, as of now, under inflationary situation, the number one fundamental factor which we pay heat to is the CPI or the consumer price index, which leads to inflation, which leads to the interest rate decision, which leads to the exchange rate. So exchange rate is decided on interest rate. Interest rate is decided on the inflation. Inflation is measured on CPI. So CPI of any country, especially United States, is extremely important. That is number one news. And the number two news which we should be careful about is the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee. They are a 14-member committee in the Reserve Bank, which in the United States is known as Fed. So they decide so once in a quarter, they come and decide what will be the inflation and the interest rate for the United States for the next two years. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, but they dare to do it for two years. So they come back every, every quarter and then they verify what they have seen. So fundamentally, we pay heat to two types of news, the name CPI and the, inf and, the, and the FOMC. These are the only two news, but we always enter on technical aspects, if that mean, if means something to you. Yeah, yeah, that makes, makes total sense, yeah. And with this focus in trading psychology, um, when do you believe traders in general usually struggle more with their emotions, when they're buying or when they're selling? So like, let's say, what do you think is stronger, panic selling or panic buying? Panic selling is definitely stronger. Uh, because you have seen market comes down in a very rapid speed because the selling when when my market is in panic it goes down very fast but the build up which we call it accumulation which is on the hope when we buy we hope that it will go up hope is not that strong as fear so that is why panic selling is is more more important from psychology point of view than buying on hope so so distribution is faster than accumulation anytime but people would be fearful uh, in general sense uh, uh, take trading is um, i would say 33% technical 33% uh, fundamental and 33% psychological and psychology plays a very important role and to answer your question david i would say two types of fear which i have seen people suffering one is fear of missing out and the other one is fear of losing money. No matter whether they buy, lose money or sell, lose money, they'll be fearful and they'll be driven by psychological and amygdala. That makes sense. And well, now that we understand a little bit about your trading style, strategy and mentality, um, what are your favorite trading assets and why? Uh, we trade all the asset classes. So we trade five asset classes, Forex, shares, commodities, bonds, indices, and cryptocurrencies. So we trade all the, all the five asset classes. Why we trade all the five asset classes? Because we do not know when Forex would be in a range market, when commodity would be in a range market. To avoid that, number one, and number two, to diversify, so we trade all the asset classes for the time being because election is coming in United States and we knew and we already know what happened when Donald Trump was elected in 2016. Price skyrocketed. So we can see a very volatile market now in share market followed by commodity and then followed by Forex as of now. So for that, we do not have any favorite one, in, one asset class or one instrument. We say, do not fall in love with one asset class or do not fall in love with one instrument within that asset class. So we trade eight instruments of each asset class. So every day we scan 40 markets. And, and for the time being, we have share market as, the, as, the, as our favorite. Understood. And do you choose like high liquid uh, assets within those, those asset classes? Let's say if you're trading Forex, are you choosing... Euro USD, for example, or are you choosing exotics? 
not at all exotic no <laughs> very far off from exotic <laughs> because of high liquidity and high volatility volatility is our friend volatility can be a trader's friend if it is utilized properly so uh, as i told you we trade eight uh, instruments in forex out of that major we trade three of them euro sterling and yen and uh, from minor we trade one aussie because they are very correlated to canadian dollar and new zealand kiwi so we don't trade cad and kiwi so we trade euro sterling yen and aussie and we trade only four cross currencies or triangulated currency pairs like euro aussie euro cad sterling aussie and sterling swiss so these are the eight currency pairs which we trade and are these long term positions or short term positions how how what is the average duration of your positions or is it all over the map a uh, very good question again see we don't have any job but to trade right so for that from that perspective from that perspective we trade four four time frames so one is again we relate this to our patience level so when we teach something on trading we trade we trade we say after you are trained by us and after you know a little bit of a technical edge we will be giving to you then we say trading has nothing to do with trading trading has to do with other things like patience like your time availability like your risk appetite so i'll answer this question from the patience perspective so we have end of day end of day strategy that is end of 24 hours and we also that is a positional trade and we also capture the swing trades but that swing trades we capture in 20, 12 hours or 4 hours 12 hours and 4 hours in swing trading and we trade also intraday to get the intraday volatility but that is only for 3 hours that opening hours of the market from 9 to 12 so we trade all the four time frames that's very interesting and along your personal trading journey uh, when you remember you first started out to now, for example, uh, how did your risk management uh, evolve? What were mistakes that you were doing back then when you just started? There are mistakes that you are never doing them again right now. Uh, I have come across an opportunity to uh, talk to people like you and actually train uh, one to one uh, more than 10,000 people. So. I say always in, in, in the initial state, I probably did all the mistake put together of those 10,000 people put together. So I did all kinds of mistake at the start. But when we when we mature, when we grow up as a uh, uh, as a mature trader and learn from the mistakes of not only the one which you are doing, but also from others, 5,000, 10,000, big number, then you tend to know that it is a it is not a get rich quick scheme so trading is not a get rich quick scheme it is a marathon and it is not a sprint so for that number one rule in the risk management is you need to preserve your capital so that you can trade one year after or you can trade five years after so number one is preserving your capital so how can you preserve your capital if you lose less for example 30 percent of the time you lose and we you win 70 percent and that too when we win you win more than one percent and when we lose we lose less than one percent so that is the crux of the matter so the advancement which has happened in last 15 years and this we never do is we have understood the difference between gambling and trading and we have understood the risk risk aspect of trading so nowadays we don't take more uh, anything more than 0.3 to 0.5 percent it is not required it is not required to take a trade more than 0.3 to 0.5 percent of your for total portfolio size so if the portfolio size is 1 million you don't take a trade more than 3000 so if you lose you lose only 3000 that is 0.3 percent that is a very good learning which we had interesting and for those of you who are watching this podcast right now you know that we often ask this question. I mean, Parta, you can choose not to answer. If you don't want it, it's fine. Daniela will cut it out. Remember, this is an offline podcast. Uh, but the question is, what is your most mem memorable loss 
and if you can tell us the story about about that uh, the most memorable loss yeah people yes. tend to forget the, <laughs> forget the loss <laughs> remember the there are too many podcasts asking about how much you win right and we like to ask how what is the most memorable memorable uh, what is the biggest loss in your memory because you know you you get a chance to share a real trader experience right and a real trader experience is not built on winnings it's built on losing and that's how you get there and that's why you're in the podcast in, in this podcast so that's why we asked this question yeah absolutely I, i i love to answer this question when i started i remember long back 15 16 years back when i started i started with a small capital right so we uh, i always believe that you need to start with a capital which you can afford to lose so in my case it was 52000 right 52000 was then i can afford to lose so i started with 52000 back in 2005 long back yeah 2005 and i remember i invested entire 52000 in one particular share <laughs> so <laughs> and that share was going like crazy up and down because that was a small cap and my capital was also going up and down like crazy because we started as a family business and my my wife was very much with me at that time so we decided at a, at um, on that particular trade which was 52000 invested and it was going crazy so we probably lost uh, i think uh, around 8 uh, to 10000 in that trade and that was the biggest and only trade which we lost that much wow okay thank you for sharing that cool um patrick do you have questions um yeah so i guess kind of going back to the the risk management side of things um you know when when you're you're thinking about you know your portfolio and everything how do you consider the position sizing and um you know how much risk each position is adding to your portfolio um and you know your grand scheme of you know trying to maximize that return excellent question brilliant question we generally say your portfolio risk should be the risk amount total amount uh, after taking the entire portfolio risk for xyz i'll tell you that amount for us you can go to bed and sleep for 8 hours at night so that should be your portfolio risk in our case our portfolio risk is 5% when we ran the prop trading firm from 4 years from 2019 to 2024 our maximum drawdown we allowed was also 5% so we always believe that 5% is a good portfolio risk and if we and for us since we trade five asset classes we distribute that 5% into 11% for each asset class so forex having 1% shares 1% commodity 1% bond indices 1% and cryptocurrency 1% so if any market is not going in your favor which happens 30% of the time we win 767 to 30, 70% we lose 33 to 30% when one market is going against you and you are losing only 1% that means you are losing only maximum 30% of your portfolio risk so that is our distribution of the portfolio risk across all the asset classes and supposing i have distributed 1% in forex and i got an opportunity to trade uh, uh, three of them for example i got a long on euro uh, long on euro cad and short on sterling swiss for example if i if our system generated three at the same time so i'll divide that 1% into 3 and then take 0.33 or 0.33 0.33 so if that answers your questions patrick yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense and part of in your 17 years of experience you have seen evolution of global markets what's the most significant change that you have seen in the trading land, landscape and how did you adapt to it so i imagine you went through a lot um throughout your all of your trading journey what has been the biggest change they would say from back when you started versus the way trading the trading landscape is today as that's a good question as per my understanding and observation for last 17 years i have seen two things happening in this market the introduction of more and more retail traders the introduction of more and more retail traders has made this market more volatile and also has introduced more trap because professionals always will lay trap for the amateurs to fall 
because if, if you need a buy one million, if you place a one million buy orders, you need to have one million sell orders. Otherwise, the tick will not be there. So you have to pretend that you are selling. You have to pretend that you are selling. So the amateurs will cut in. So amateurs will cut in that sell, and then you pick the uh, deep and buy. So that is how the market works. Like, so the so that is the number one the change which I have seen. Uh, number of with the introduction of uh, more retail and retail traders, the uh, the volatility has increased, and the traps also has increased. Number one. And number two is the introduction of all this uh, chat GPT and AI related thingy. I, I don't blame anyone and any, anyone can try anything. So with the bots coming in, robot uh, algorithmic trading is good, not bad. Trading is a mix of algorithmic, discretionary and non-discretionary trading. Trading is a mix of art and science. But if you do not understand ABCD and you go for a black box generated by an artificial intelligence and you trade, that's a dangerous thing which is growing nowadays. I think these are the two things. If that answers your question, David. Yeah, that definitely does. And on that, I mean, you talked already a little bit about uh, uh, trading bots and all that, but what would you say are other common trading myths that you frequently, frequently come across and how do you debunk them for, for, for your students? Yeah, that's a brilliant, brilliant question. We have because we run the education in an in a very structured way. So, for example, our uh, forex trading is a thirty six hours course, and our share trading is eighteen hours course. And we bring we 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 actually divide that eighteen hours or thirteen six hours into modules and units. So I'll come back to this question. So one of the module and one of the units which is which is having instruction based discussion is having a table of myths versus how to debunk this. <laughs> so there are many myths actually in trading. Good that you asked this question. The number one myth is uh, trading is a part-time job. This is a myth. It's not. It's a hardcore business. When you are trading, you are trading with a million dollar computer developed by Goldman Sachs. When you are trading, you are trading like a brain of a Paul Tudor Jones or, or George Soros yeah, or HSBC. Yeah? So when you are trading, you are really you are doing a hardcore business. That is the number one myth that trading can be, can be like gambling. There is a very thin line between gambling and trading. In gambling, the odds are always in favor of the house. In trading, through technical edge, through practice tasks, through back testing, we can understand the market bar by bar and can stack the probability in our favor. So that is the difference between trading and gambling. So then the second myth can be, I can be a millionaire if I follow this strategy in one month time. So that means get rich quick scheme. So that is a myth again. So you have to say that, no, not at all. The trading is not, nothing to do with get rich quick scheme. It is a marathon every, and it is a journey and every one of us, including all of us, have to go has to go through this journey individually. I have gone through your, my journey. You have gone through your journey. A, a person who is studying, who is starting now, has to go through his or her journey, and it may take years to understand. So these are the common myths uh, in trading. When people come, they think that uh, it is excitement, it is um, it is it is a, a, a immediate money, um, and it is it, uh, it, I can get risk scheme. And all those things, these are really uh, big myths. And Parfa, why did you decide to go into education and not just stay on, on trading yourself? Why did you decide to mentor other students uh, to go into education? Fantastic. Brilliant question. So um, I, I, did, I did not come to education from day one. Uh, so first we, we started as a trader. First we started a novice, an amateur. Then you grow, you go, you do your journey and go. And go and do a work i have oh, i worked with two, two three different companies in australia uh, and they are they were mainly mainly into uh, trading as well in education so what i realized that now from the time being we trade mainly only the first 3 hours in australia in melbourne time it is 9 am to 12 because 9 am um, during winter uh, all the forex market opens at 9 o'clock all the cryptocurrency opens at market uh, 9 o'clock Gold, oil, uh, commodity opens at nine o'clock. Then the indices, 
uh, I did, uh, we trade ASX 200, Australia Stock Exchange 200 cash. That opens at 950, 950. So 50 minutes, 50, 50 minutes. Then the, we trade only two um, shares in Australia. Uh, other six are from United States. So two shares open at 1002, two minutes past 10. CSL and Cochlear, these are the two shares. And then comes the last one, which is the Hang Seng market, Hong Kong market, which opens at 11.15 our time. So the market opening time varies from 9 o'clock to 11.15. So we take generally position, whether it is in daily or intraday, between 9 to 12. And our intraday is done and dusted between these three hours, 9 to 12. What to do from 12 to 6? Then we decided why not to share our experience with others? Why not to help them who are struggling? Why not to add value to their understanding? Why not to clear their myths? And why not tell the truth and not sell some dreams? That is why we are in education. Wow, those are beautiful words. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, Partha, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Uh, Patrick, do you have anything else? Any no, other questions? no, I, I appreciate you joining us. It was uh, great to chat. Thank you very much, David, Daniela, and Patrick. It was a real pleasure to talk to you and learn from you. I really learned a lot, and I hope I have added some value, if any. I look forward to you seeing you again and talk to you again. So do we. Uh, Parta, if anyone wants to learn more about what, what you do, do you have a website, a place where people can go and uh, check your work and uh, your education program? Yes. Uh, we, uh, we run a trader training institute in Australia. I don't know whether you can see my screen or not. Uh, it is NP Financials and for Nelly P. Popita. Actually, as I said, uh, we started as a family business. So N is for my wife's name, Nabanita, and P for my name, Partha. NPfinancials.com.au. And we are number one regulated prop trading firm in Australia. We are regulated by Australian Securities and Investment Commission, ASIC. And we have our own license, AFSL, Australian Financial Services License. So anyone who is interested to join us and get trained in any asset class can go to npfinancials.com.au and start their journey. Awesome. Perfect. That's great. Thank you very much, Porta. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining and watching. Remember to subscribe and catch you guys on the next podcast, Face the Trader.